What's shaking, guys? Luke Dancy here. We are very excited today to have live from Los Angeles, Mr. Garrett Thomas. We'll get to him in just a sec because I also have some free magic to hook you guys up with first if you want to win this. We've got his at the table lecture absolutely free to you guys. All you need to do is like and comment on this video and you are automatically entered to win one of these. Now we're going to do one for Facebook and one for YouTube. Winners will be announced next week. Our winner from last week is Leon Anderson. Leon wins the book only I did. It's all about creating magic. So congrats to Leon and good luck to everybody out there to enter for next week's giveaway of his at the table lecture. Of course, who am I talking about? Garrett Thomas. What's up, man? How we doing? Doing well. All right. All right. So uh, we were chatting pre-show. Why don't you let the guys know where you are hanging out right now? Because it's actually pretty cool. So yeah, this week I'm performing at the Magic Castle in, uh, in LA and uh, one of my favorite places to to do a, a little more formal show. I usually avoid doing formal shows, but uh, the spirit of the castle is so, uh, you know, everyone's there for magic and it, they're, you know, it's easy to get into the, the meat of things. So I, I love coming out here and, and doing this. Uh, I'm in the late close up, so if you're around, come down, but my shows fill up within seconds. Uh, the first day, it was a Monday late night and usually they don't do all four shows and I had a, uh, you know, standing room only in all of them. So uh, if you are going to come down, come a little bit early. So, right on. Right on. Yeah. Well, uh, our first question popping up is a great one because it's about the Magic Castle, actually, which I think is pretty fitting here. Uh, Mark Wybrow would like to know, what's it like to perform at the Magic Castle with other magicians and professional magicians? So just what's it like to be there and perform that's a big deal you know um you know it's it's a dream come true you know at, at first uh you know i've been here this is my fifth time being here and i've been nominated magician of the year or close-up magician of the year oh, yeah. uh and the lecture of the year and you know when i first got here it was insane because i'm performing at the table that i saw brian gillis perform at and that's what got me into magic. Cool. And then I look up and sitting in my audience was Brian Gillis. <laughs> and he got me into magic. You know, he didn't know. But his performances on The Tonight Show made it, you know, I just love the idea of just being a magician, not doing a magic act, not doing a show, uh, not playing a character, but just, hey, I'm a guy with you in the moment. Uh, without... Brian Gillis and his teacher, Eddie Fector, uh, mm -hmm. who kind of took that Chicago style, but got rid of the showmanship, got rid of the stories and just was a person doing magic. Mm -hmm. If we hadn't had those guys, you wouldn't have me or even guys like David Blaine, who are just conversational magicians. They just go out there and are a human being in the moment doing magic. Yeah. Uh, so you know, going full circle and being at the castle, uh, it, it's, you know, I had this moment where I thought, you know, I did it. I'm, I'm, my dreams have come true. But as soon as that happened, I am in my mind, I emotionally just the floor fell out beneath me. And I realized that I've just begun that the rabbit hole goes deeper, that in a way I'm now ready to actually start saying things that I'm in a position that people would listen. Wow. That is, uh, I love how full circle that is where he was in the audience that, you know, that was you one day, you know, and then here you are out there doing that and God rest his soul, Brian Gillis. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I want to let the guys know too, we are taking questions live. That's why we do this live. That's why we do unplugged live. So you guys can ask questions. Um, also we will be talking about Opus, the brown, the brand new ring to coin project. Uh, this is like a collection of ideas from Garrett. So get those questions in about that. We're going to get detailed into that too. Um, we've got a lot of other good specific questions coming in too. So um, this is one I'd like to get to. Um, this is from someone that really wants to get inside your head here. They say from Kevin over on YouTube, any advice on where to start as a magician? I'm gimmick heavy right now because I started not too long ago. Tips on what to start. Oops. Uh, tips on what to start with and where to start on learning the art. So he wants to start from the very beginning other than just play with gimmicks. Yeah. What I always like to tell people is if this was martial arts, 
you have to do it exactly a certain way, that you have to follow the teacher, because if you don't execute it that way, you're going to get thrown across the room. But this is an art form, and there are no right or wrong ways. Uh, if you use gimmicks, your struggle is going to be making it feel human. If you use sleight of hand, your struggle is going to be to make it look clean. And there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, if you have to use gimmicks, that's fine. Uh, the reason I chose sleight of hand is really uh, selfish. Uh, it's, it's a matter of efficiency. It's a matter of uh, confidence that I know that if I had nothing, if my baggage got lost mm -hmm. in uh, TSA, uh, that I could go to a store, buy a deck of cards, and put a show on. Uh, that's, that's for me, you know, cause your audience will not know if it's a special deck, if you present it right, or if it's a gimmick deck, uh, yeah. you know, so the reason I like sleight of hand magic is that in the end, it's me. I also have the, uh, the pride of being able to feel like I am doing magic, mm -hmm. uh, that it's, I'm the cause. I, uh, there's nothing wrong with gimmicks and in many ways, I look at magicians that have a gimmick that they're the keeper of an enchanted object. That they're they're like it's the difference between Frodo and Gandalf. You know, Frodo could put the ring on and vanish, uh, but Gandalf could make a ring. But uh, I hear you're not supposed to tempt him. I'm pretty sure he was clear about that. But, <laughs> uh, the the challenge, though, if you're going to be focused on the tools you have is creating uh, a logical through line because a lot of these inventors don't make all the gaps in the same brand of cards and they don't make all the rings that look exactly the same. Uh, I'm trying to, to make sure my products line up together and that we work together, uh, which is why it's good to decide uh, as a community on, on a certain style uh, so that we don't have to make an infinite amount of decks of cards for you. Uh, but... <laughs> I, uh, you know, if you're willing to commit to any gimmick, find the guy who created it and have it made in your style. If you like the three and a half of clubs, get a two and a half of diamonds and a four and a half of spades, because there's going to be, you're going to want to do stuff over and over again. You want it to bear repetition. So if you love it, go all in, invest in it, you know, uh, get it made, uh, find out uh, where where these guys are and uh, and we'll help you out you know that's what we're here for yeah i mean you you are definitely one of the the most approachable guys in magic also one of the more talented guys because you're not just a creator but you're also a performer which is a rare breed these days you know you do it both you do it both ways here you know you actually do the stuff that you are creating um and sometimes you create i would assume because it's stuff you actually want to do like it's out of necessity you know it's like stuff that you actually want to use like at the magic castle which is where you're at right now um, yeah, yeah, it happened. It, it happened to me. Uh, I was uh, looking at a poster, an old, old IBM poster with all the little vignettes oh, yeah. of the performers that were going to be there that year. Like very old poster. Uh -huh. And uh, Carl Norman, uh, who uh, really popularized the card on a ceiling, mm -hmm. uh, he um, he was on the poster, and I'm in the magic shop with him. And I said to Carl man, what do you have to do to be one of those guys? And he said, don't worry about it. Just be selfish, do good magic, and it will happen. And if you create what you want, and if you create the magic you want to see, you'll, you know, it, you'll have more pride in it. You'll have uh, more uh, confidence and more, you know, you'll be celebrating it more. You'll want to share it with more people. Uh, there are a couple effects that I put on the market that I haven't reproduced or re-up, uh, like the mash pack, where, you know, I saw better ways to do the same effect. So why would I keep putting out a good way, but not the best way? So I pulled it, you know, um, it's, uh, and a lot of people miss it, but uh, there, to me, if there's something better, I, I wouldn't, feel right about teaching uh, my version. Uh, you know, as long as there's, uh, we, we need very variation, but you know, it's, it's finding the right tool for the right job. And, uh, 
And so just focusing on what you like and what you want to do uh, will, will guide you to, to creating good magic. Right on. And one of the tools that you created and have released recently is Opus. And this is not a you know product specific chat, but it's kind of hard to ignore it because it is something that people um, have been very excited about on our uh, socials. I've seen a lot of very positive comments. People have seen you actually do this because you've been working on this for a while. It's not just an idea that you put out. You've actually been using this for a while. So um, people have been using it. Uh, so, and, and, you know, Opus is something that kind of goes hand in hand with something you were just saying, which is finding things that you can have your own versions of or build off of. And we were talking about this before where Opus, there was a similar thing that popped up recently um, called the collusion ring. It's like a ring set. And why don't you kind of talk about how sometimes the crediting gets lost and then we can kind of go into the details of Opus because it is a topic that I'm very adamant about crediting and all that. So why don't we talk a little bit about that side of things as well before we get into Opus because it is badass. Cool. Uh, yeah, collusion, uh, you know, was was a coin to ring uh, effect uh, that came out just a couple days after op I've been, you know, I've been selling Opus uh, in my lecture for, uh, you know, you know, since uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, so Opus is finally now being released to the public, uh, but Collusion just came out uh, not too long ago. And uh, they have a lot of great stuff. I, I love the look, I love the, the tools. Uh, it's not my style and it might not be your style, but if it is your style, the, the stuff they, they're making is really, really excellent. Um, however, uh, in their instruction, uh, they had included a lot of my concepts uh, in uh, coin to ring magic or using the ring thing uh, routines in their in their product. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people make this mistake. Uh, it's common. Uh, often people think of the ring thing as a move uh, when it actually is a full routine. You know, there are many steps that make the ring thing. Uh, work. It's not just a substitution principle. Right. Um, it's miming, a fake take, a, a transfer, a substitution principle, and a, a re-substitution principle on the switch back. Uh, to, it, to me, that's a full routine. Yeah. Uh, it's not just a, a move. But a lot of people, because it happens so quickly, they think, oh, just do the ring thing. <laughs> and no, no, it's a full, it's my routine. Yeah. And uh, they included that and several other things of mine uh, in their instructions. And uh, that's not really the best way to go about it uh, in the community today. Uh, there's a lot of things to think about and I have my own personal rules. And for some reason, uh, a lot of guys come to me for guidance on, on how to approach these things. Mm -hmm. uh, tricks like Tiny Plunger only happen because I talk to uh, John Armstrong about what things were his and I talked to Matthew Beach about what things were his and it was all of Matthew Beach's principles mm -hmm. but John Armstrong's presentation for that tiny plunger and uh, you realize that they needed to collab they needed to come together to put out that project and that's what we did uh, I was kind of the mediator in that uh, project um, so if the guy is alive and they're still profiting from uh, the sale of that trick, yeah. you have no right to teach what they're teaching. When you buy a product, the products are intended for your performances. So you have the right to perform that trick. Uh, sometimes TV rights are not included, but uh, most of the time you have the right to perform that trick uh, in paid shows or private shows, uh, but you do not have the right to uh, reteach that information uh, that is held by the inventor. Uh, so then there comes another issue that once the guy is, uh, is no longer with us, uh, is there a company or a family that still owns and is trying to make a profit, right. uh, some money on that? Uh, you know, guys like Daryl, uh, his family is still selling his products. And, uh, you know, that would be something I would say we should still respect. Uh, you know, 
legally, it's a, it's a tricky situation. They they talk about magic in law as being a self-governing body. So it's really hard for lawyers to step in uh, because we've already set a precedent of that we kind of police ourselves. And because of that, we need to take uh, more care in this uh, community, in this, in this family, to, uh, to speak out and to make sure that we're all on the same page about these things. Uh, because legally, uh, I mean, right now, I've been copywriting my tricks as a dance. Because if I put it under magic, um, it's, there's a precedent already set. But if I say, this is my choreography, and uh, these are my dance moves, and this is the routine. Of course, the routine is visually and po- visual and popping. <laughs> um, by copywriting it under dance, I know I'm protected. Uh, but uh, the if you try to copyright it under magic, uh, we already set a precedent that we're going to police ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, there are many ways to uh, to get around this. So if there is a part of a routine of somebody else's act that you need because you're performing it, but you have this cool new touch. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I was working on was uh, Danny D'Ortiz's triumph. And he told me that I could take it and, and teach it, but he's still selling it. So out of respect to him, uh, when I taught it, I said, okay, this is the position you're in in phase one or at the end of phase one for Danny's uh, triumph. And I found out if you adjust these things, you can get this to happen. And so take that and try that. So now they still have to own Danny's triumph, uh, open uh, straight triumph or yeah, open triumph. That's what he called it. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have, you have to uh, own Danny's to even understand uh, what adjustments I'm suggesting. So I don't have the right, Personally, I don't feel that I could teach Danny's and then uh, teach my adjustment just because I have an adjustment. I would just source the original material or make Danny an offer to buy the rights to that uh, material to include it on my video or include his video with my product, meaning that I would buy them from him and then together uh, put his video in my product. So there's a lot of clever ways we can go about it. But um, if the person is still trying to make a living uh, selling this information, we have to respect uh, that this is their livelihood and this is what they do and that uh, you shouldn't take from that. There was a question that kind of came in here. It was more of a comment um, that I think that you would probably uh, agree with here. It's in line with this. Kevin from YouTube says, also, if you know the secret of ring thing, let's just take that as an example from a bad performance on YouTube, do yourself a favor, purchase ring thing, because all the small details make a big difference. And we were talking about that earlier where yeah, someone might teach something, but they're going to teach it poorly. So you're going to learn it poorly, even though you're not the one that taught it. So I'll, I'll let you kind of dive in on that. Yeah. So it, it's heartbreaking. Um, on Greg Wilson's ring and string, I gave him permission to teach, uh, one of the 27 versions of ring thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he adjusted the information. Uh, He thought it was better to throw the ring on sideways instead of coming up. But if you perform that routine, because of the principle, there's a little flicker that happens here. And uh, I want to uh, eliminate that. So by tossing the ring up, it fixes that. And it also he had a different uh, hand, a different hand position and things like that. And because so many people learned it from him, still to this day, I have to fix what they learned wrong from another teacher. And that was the last time I, I finally understood why I can't let anyone else teach it. Because later, people that learned it from Greg Wilson went on YouTube and said, look, it's Garrett Thomas's ring thing. And it wasn't. It was Greg Wilson's adjusted version of my ring thing. And now my name is attached to something that I I would not think is uh, valuable. And uh, and now I have to go out there and educate people even more. So my time and my effort that I originally put into it 
to get good information out there um, is now diluted. And now I have to spend even more time and more effort to fix what somebody else taught. Uh, and there are many things that I'm not even communicating verbally in a, in a video. You need to have the inventor teach it. You know, if, if you have uh, somebody else teaching this guy's trick because that guy's not too popular uh, yet. Um, so let's throw some uh, YouTube name on to, uh, on to teach it. That guy is going to do it his own way and he's going to miss unconscious things that the inventor would have learned through doing it the wrong way for years. You know, that process of messing up teaches you what to do that even even you might not even know you're doing it when you watch a magician on a video you can burn in his body language into your mind and sometimes that can be bad but you'll you'll pick up why the effect works better when you learn it from the inventor than if you learn it from a copy of a copy which is what you see when somebody else teaches it on YouTube. So what I tell people with YouTube use it as shopping. <laughs> you can you can uh, it's window shopping. Uh, if you see something you like being taught by somebody else, you have to find the inventor because if you like it by that guy, trust me it's going to be a lot better and a lot more uh, informative from uh, the the original inventor. You know, it's funny when you're talking about that stuff, it reminds me of a messed up game of telephone. You know, it's basically that the, the details oh, yeah. get lost in the mix. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 if you, if you took a Xerox and, you know, copied it again and again, it would just turn black uh, over time. I, uh, you know, you really, you know, and this isn't just about uh, tricks that you learn. You really always want to go back to the foundation. Uh, as far back as you can go, um, if you don't study how to handle a magic wand, uh, practice it. You know, I never use a magic wand, uh, but uh, Tyler Erickson uh, has this great course on wand work that teaches you different ways uh, of, uh, of handling a ball and a wand and, and the choreography about it, um, how to not cross your body line and how to structure things properly so that you know, you, you won't end up uh, with the problem where where you you take a card here and then you put it back here to put it down here. You know, why did I go back to the deck to put it there? Uh, those type of things just to clean up a double, I guess. Um, but, uh, you know, if you learn how to handle a magic wand, uh, you'll know why you want to place a deck to your left or your right or place a coin purse in a certain place or all your props, the, the, where they, where they go when you're not using them is a major, major uh, choreography challenge so that you know how to pick them up or how to just make them disappear if they're not important to the story. Well said. And, and this is why I love having people like Garrett here. As you can tell, we're not just going to sit here and talk about his trick, which we're about to do in a second. We're going to talk about Opus here. Um, but you're getting a real insight into his head about how he thinks about this, not just as magic, as tricks, but as an art. And that is one word that always, always becomes connected to Garrett Thomas. And you know this, Garrett, it's art. This is art to you. And I think that yep. makes you stand apart from everybody just because you look at it as a true art form, which is a beautiful thing, dude. It, it's an art form within an art form within an art form. <laughs> yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, for me... Art is anything that's not for survival. And when somebody says to me, uh, I'm not an artist, I remind them, well, you started with this blank canvas called uh, a human being, and you decided how to dress, how to look, how to act. Uh, maybe your parents started to draw on it first, but you could have erased that. You could have added to it. You could have started all over. You could have adjusted it, whatever. Uh, it's your art piece. It's your life. Uh, and that is an art piece. It's not for survival. It is for survival in the bigger art piece we're doing called society. Uh, but it's not really for human survival. Uh, so therefore, it's an artistic expression. Uh, love and eating and dining and dancing, these are all artistic expressions, a celebration of life. 
And magic falls into that category for me in a very obvious way. Um, if the whole point of art is to reestablish who we are, you know, I can look in the mirror all day and I can't figure out who I am, but I like this painting, but I don't like this one, but you like that one, but you don't like this one. So therefore we're separate. We have identity. Uh, and uh, the judgment of what you like and what you dislike is what forms your identity. It's what separates us, even though the truth is we're all connected as a life force called Earth, uh, and the human beings are, you know, roaming around it uh, chaotically, but uh, we, we are all a part of this system. You know, if you, if you look at a bee and a flower, uh, an alien life form would think it's one organism. Because if you eliminate the bee, the flower dies. If you eliminate the flower, the bee dies. Uh, but if you look at the picture big enough, if you eliminate the bees, we die. So are we not all connected? And so I think the point of art is to play this game of identity, to play this game of society and life. And so magic gives a unique way of challenging someone about their own identity. They have to go, wait a minute, who am I in the face of this brand new experience that I never thought could be? And I don't even think it even happened, yet it just happened. I, you know, we know what we feel like and who we are based on the music we listen to and the, the food we eat and the things we love. Magic is something that wakes you up because it's like, wait a minute, who am I now? Who am I in the face of this? Uh, how do I, where do I put this information? What do I do with it? And that's what astonishment does. Astonishment wakes you up to being questioning who am I now with this thing that did and didn't happen simultaneously. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's the greatest art form. My whole family were artists. And uh, so I decided to give the gift of magic because, you know, Every other art form is just a thing. And they tell you that if you can go skydiving, if that's your thing, or if you can buy a second car, you already have one, but you want to get a second one, go skydiving. The experience of doing something you want to do is better than owning another thing. Uh, so if the experience is the best gift to give someone, magic is a way of giving someone an experience they can't get anywhere else. And... Uh, it's, it's not just art, it's surrealist performance art is what I like to call it. Um, it's it's a giving a moment that didn't happen. It's the answer to the question, what do you get somebody who has everything? <laughs> I love that. That's a really good way to put it. Uh, and speaking of you know creating art, what a segue we're about to have here. Um, yeah, thank you. you have done that beautifully. Uh, it's like poetry in motion it really is watching you do opus, um, which is something I want to start talking about now. I've seen a lot of people mention it as well. Um, this is something if you guys haven't seen yet, I'm going to throw the a bit of the trailer up and have Garrett kind of walk you through it. But this is not just a trick. I want to preface it with that. This is something that Garrett has spent a lot of time on and will continue to spend time on. And he'll tell you more about that as we go forward. Um, but what is the opus project in a nutshell? And you will kind of talk over the trailer here so people can know more about it if they haven't seen this just yet. Yeah, so the the Opus project is really not just a trick. Um, it's me showing you how I structure a uh, sleight of hand. And uh, it starts with just a, a coin production. Um, and then it became a coin to ring. Uh, and as I progressed in these adjustments, I realized that what I learned from the routines that I gave up were just as valuable to the final success. Mm -hmm. You see these magicians performing these difficult sleight of hand moves and you know what you're seeing right here just had three or four transitions in it uh, that are secret. Uh, you know, and that doesn't happen overnight. You know, what I realized for me to honestly teach it to you, for you to have success, that you have to know all of the good routines that I've stopped doing as well. 
And so this is a ticket to ride. This is a journey where I don't just teach uh, the one routine that is featured here. Uh, and it really isn't about the routine at all. You know, I, we had to show something on the trailer, but it really is about structure. It's about um, how you can be critical about your own magic. Uh, you're going to watch me be hypercritical about my own stuff. And you're going to see me go, well, that was a problem because of this. I don't like that my hand came too far forward for no reason. What can I do to eliminate that? You know, and uh, each step along the way uh, allowed me to, to make the final routine smooth. And it's not done. Um, I already now have uh, three notes that I'm ready. As soon as I get time to sit in front of a camera, we're going to film it and we're going to update the stream so that uh, we have uh, new information coming up very quickly. So whenever you decide to, to buy this ticket, um, you'll, you, you want to go all the way back to the beginning and, uh, and learn what you can. You know, if, if you can't handle the switches, because this is not uh, an easy routine. This is heavy sleight of hand. Uh, most of my other routines, I tried to make it so that it was uh, that it was likely people could have success with it because it was good principles and the sleight of hand was was uh, was lessened. But you know there are lots of great things that the best path is the sleight of hand. So um, here you can go back to my beginning and learn up to where you're comfortable. And uh, there's you know, almost three DVDs of information already on the stream. And so if you are uh, very comfortable with sleight of hand and coin magic, um, this might be something you, you'll rush right to the end on. Uh, and a lot of people want to skip right to the end, but you'll miss the, uh, the true gift of this project is that you will know what I know. You will know um, all the reasons why I did it a certain way. And if anything goes wrong, you can abort and use one of the older versions that are also good. But if you, if the coin doesn't perfectly land exactly where you need it to, uh, you can adjust. You, you have the other routines uh, to, uh, the, in your mind, uh, those muscle memories are important to, uh, to ha have the confidence to perform something difficult. I, uh, you know, in a live performance. All right on. We've had some great questions already coming in uh, for this. Um, one of the common questions is about the ring itself. Can the ring be worn as an everyday ring? Uh, why don't we kind of talk about that? Yes, it can. Yep. Uh, it is uh, the exact same ring that I use for Bandit. Oh, cool. So like I had said earlier that, you know, it would be weird if you switched rings in the mid show. <laughs> so. For me, I'm making uh, uh, the banded ring and the opus ring, it's exactly the same. Um, it's a steel core ring and it is coated in a dark nickel. So it will get darker uh, over time. And that is because uh, with ring magic, you want to have uh, a contrast. So a shiny ring like this uh, at the wrong angle will just fade into my skin tone. The darker it is, the better. Uh, you know, so for, uh, if I have a, if I'm only doing extreme close up, a shiny ring is fine. But if you have a little more of a parlor situation or a stage situation, you almost want to use a black ring. A gap in the human hand, uh, is going to scream across the room. You know, when a coin is shiny, uh, all you have to do is shake it and everyone on stage can see it. But because of the roundness of a ring, uh, it reflects and diffuses the light. So you really want to go with something dark. It's, so it's counterintuitive to the, the type of uh, things we use when it comes to coin magic. That is uh, a great question. And especially with the size of the ring too, I wanted to mention that because I'm looking through some more of the comments here. Um, when it comes to buying the ring, because it does come in different sizes, yeah. a very important tip about that, I'm gonna let you run with that right now because that is very important when you're buying this. Yeah, yeah we have six sizes and to Take advantage of all my material if you're going to do the ring thing stuff or uh, band it. Uh, you want it to be a ring that is tight and not going to fall off, yet you're able to push it off with the thumb of the same hand. 
Uh, so it's tricky if I'm, you know, at a, a lecture or a convention, uh, you can try on my rings and, and see which one is perfect. Uh, but the sizes are the inner diameter and it's uh, by millimeters. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the size 21 is an 11. The size 22 is closer to 11 and three quarters. Uh, you know, and so if you're, if you're struggling and you can't figure out what size you want, if you just tell me what ring size, uh, you are in U S or Europe, uh, I can kind of uh, tell you what would be best for you. Uh, it's always best to be a little looser, uh, so that you can take advantage of all of the, uh, extra bonus moves that are in the project. Yep. Uh, but, uh, you want it, you don't want it to be so loose that it flies off when you gesture. Yeah. And that's very important, which is why I want to make sure everyone knew about the details of the ring uh, itself when you buy it. Um, when it comes to the difficulty of this, I know you were touching on, you know, some of the details about it, but um, Mark would like to know, uh, this looks amazing. How easy or how difficult is this? So on the project, you know, what type of, uh, what can people expect, I guess, when it comes to that? So the final routine, I would say, is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, however, but. if you're already used to coin magic, I, you might not feel that way. You know, if you're already comfortable with retention vanishes and curl palms and, and edge grips, this is probably going to feel uh, like a nice adjustment. However, another however, uh, this is something that even if you don't perform it live, uh, I caught myself just zoning out in this routine as a meditative uh, ritual. Uh, I designed the moves based on Tai Chi, so everything flows from one to the next. There's no uh, uh, hiccups uh, in the transitions. You know, the, the 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 all the moves flow from one to the next in the uh, uh, pattern here. So the uh, the routine is very. Um, meditative and it's like got a Zen quality um, so that even if you don't get a chance to share it because you uh, are not confident with it yet, you're going to just enjoy practicing this. Uh, and the things you'll learn uh, in this uh, streaming service, uh, you can apply to all your other magic. So it's really not about this trick. I, of course, I teach all the older routines so you're going to get something you can do, you know, even if it's just uh, the production of, of a coin uh, in, in, in a hand where you wave your hand and, and it, the coin appears. Um, if, even if it was just that, uh, that is great, but it's, uh, it's not as good as showing the hand completely empty. And then, for, for example, snapping your fingers, closing the hand and have it in, having it appear. Um, I show the transition of the first iteration and why I got rid of certain things and why I went to the next one. So, you know, I was inspired by Da Vinci's uh, Mona Lisa. Uh, he never finished it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of those pieces he always carried with him. Uh, he, it wasn't like he ever said, now it's done. You know, he would keep on adjusting it. It was like his masterpiece. It was his... Uh, is opus, you know, which is why we called it this, um, that it's not something that ever is done. You know, magic is a performance art. You're going to do your best today. Tomorrow you'll make it better. You need to find peace and uh, in the moment, but never uh, never be satisfied and want to, to push yourself uh, to the next level. And there's always another level. I, uh, you know, there's never a place where I think that I, I got it, you know, that this trick is, is done. <laughs> and just as a reminder, guys, the stuff that is included on this, um, because it is a streaming thing, it's an online thing, Garrett will continue to add as he goes forward, new handlings, new ideas, new touches. So this is not just something you're buying that's complete. Like he just said, it's his opus. You're going to continue to get stuff added um, as he creates it, which is really a cool thing. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I was looking at, you know, uh, because I didn't read the books and I did use the videos, what I didn't like 
uh, in hindsight, uh, is that when I was 16 years old, I made a, a, a VHS video. And all of those routines were locked into history. Mm -hmm. But that was my magic. And I'm like, I wasn't even a quarter away started. Um, and most of those routines, many of the fundamentals there are still things I use today. But I've adjusted them. I, you know, they're not the same. You know, when you saw Goshman do the coin under the salt shaker, that was after like 50 years of performing. Uh, you know, he uh, he had it was a masterpiece already to anyone else's point of view. I'm sure he was working on it till the day he dies. Uh, but, you know, to lock something into history, history uh, at, you know, 16 years old, in hindsight, it, it's silly. But because of the world we live in today, we could take advantage of that while the person is with us, they can update that information that that it doesn't have to be locked in the stone if if something new or something better arises we can adjust it so i think uh that this is kind of the future of magic that uh that this is a way of uh, creating uh, a family and a community uh, where we can talk about it and as i grow you'll grow with me so uh you know you'll you'll catch up to me and then uh every new thing that i come up with and hopefully you know, for those who catch up to me, if they might discover something that, that I didn't think of and uh, we'll add it to the project, you know, uh, if, with their permission, if they uh, if they want to share it uh, to celebrate the community, we can uh, we can put that in and uh, and show people another avenue that they can take because uh, it started out as a production and now it's a coin to ring and it, uh, you know, it might become something else. I mean, one of the things that I'm going to teach next is that you don't actually have to make it um, as beautiful as as you want, uh, that there is something to be celebrated in the human element of the doing of something where it's not as, it's a lot easier, but the, uh, the physicality of seeing somebody do something uh, is something that's a good option in certain environments where uh, maybe uh, maybe for some reason you have a tall person standing right behind you and, and these uh, these angles are a little sensitive for that. Well, you can just, you know, go into a, another version. You know, I want to give everybody all the tools they need to have success with uh, the magic that I put out. Yeah. And you definitely uh, are doing that and will continue to do it, which is a beautiful thing. Um, I know this is a tough question, but maybe it's, uh, especially because you don't know when you're going to be, you know, creating a new thing here or there. But Jameson from YouTube is saying, you mentioned you'll be adding stuff over time. Are you going to be doing like a week, a monthly or whenever you come up with new stuff? Or do you have like a designated time when you might update? Like, is it like a once a month update or do you know? You know? This is all about the, uh, the community and the learning process of art. And it's no, there's no way to... Uh, uh, to know for sure when a new idea is going to hit you. Uh, you know, I've had effects that I worked on for 10 years before it even became something usable. Um, then I have effects that work right away. And then 20 years later, I have an adjustment that make it amazing. I, uh, you know, so it will be something that I'm hoping at least, uh, once a year, I have a major update. Um, and if something really cool happens that I can, add it to it right away. Um, but it really is, uh, when it happens now, the problem with that is because this is sold everywhere. Uh, I won't have a way of con connecting with you. Uh, if, I uh, if there is an update. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a sign up sheet, uh, with the video on the streaming service that will allow you to get the updates uh, if you bought the routine. So uh, if you uh, if you don't do that, then you're just going to have to check back periodically and see what's new. But if you uh, want to be updated when new touches are, are available, then uh, you'll probably have to sign up uh, because I won't know if you bought it through uh, 
uh, a magic shop or an online shop or from me directly. So uh, the sign-up sheet will have to be uh, with the streaming service. Okay. Um, I've, I've seen a couple people too in the, the chat here um, and you guys love the questions, by the way, you've got some great stuff. We'll probably wrap this up in the next couple of minutes, but there's been a couple uh, people that have mentioned the option maybe of creating a Opus Facebook group, which could actually maybe bridge that gap a little bit. Um, any thoughts on, or have you already you know, done that? Is there a Facebook group for Opus or maybe, maybe a thought? There is, it? there is not a Facebook group. Uh, I'm not really sure how I could organize that. I'm very, uh, uh, I'm not good at that, that medium. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, I, if, uh, if somebody would want to work with me on that, I'm not sure if there's a way to, uh, to do it where we can make sure only the best stuff is, is what's featured. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I, the problem with the, the, uh, the Facebook group is every idea is then presented right. and not just, uh, the, the, uh, the good adjustments, you know, a lot of times, you know, another issue with crediting, this will tie it all in is you can adjust something and you think you're moving it forward but you're actually moving it to one of the guy's older versions, something he eliminated for a good reason. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, look, you know, now I'm you know, like Greg Wilson. Uh, he was like, yeah, but instead of tossing it under, I want it to look like it's going right on the finger. And although it was a great concept, uh, he missed out on the cover of the principal. And because of that, he had, uh, ends up, uh, needing to perform it quicker. And when other people are doing it, they're flashing all over the place. Um, if you perform ring thing, uh, right, it's a showpiece. If you do it a little bit off, it just becomes a gag and, uh, and that's fine too. But, um, I like the idea of making this, you know, a, a clear showpiece. They can see the ring that comes off. You bring this here and then, it's right straight on. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it can be a nice showpiece, uh, if presented properly. Um, but if not, then it's just this little throwaway thing that everybody pieces together. But it's so fascinating to me these days about even performing something that everyone knows if you perform it correctly, um, there is just so much, uh, to be learned from it. Uh, like the, uh, the trick where you, you pull the thumb off, um, if you do this correctly, it actually can really <laughs> create this burn. And uh, I created this uh, this this fun little um, adjustment that instead of switching quickly here and here, right? What you do is your hand comes down and it covers. Of course, this is the classic version. And then when you open, you open with this, the thumb switched so that you can show the effect. But instead of using the same principle to go back, um, what I do is I lift the hand up. So when you're in this position, you can just lift this hand up. And in doing so, your <laughs> thumb will open and then come back down. And it will look like that thumb never left their sight. So a nice touch is to really show that thumb separate and way far away from the palm of the hand, then pop it off, even though it is closer to the palm of the hand here, they're gonna be looking at the tip of the thumb, that's the obscure thing. Then when this comes back up, you just open <laughs> it down. And, you know, so if you perform it right, it's still beautiful. You know, there's a big difference between tricks and magic. Audiences can figure out a trick. But guess what? If you try to figure out magic, it won't go away. You know, we all know how many magic tricks are done and they're still beautiful. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's real magic. Because it transcends knowledge. You know, you can know how a rainbow works. It's still going to be beautiful. You can know how a ring thing works. But when you see me do it, I'm hoping you still think it's beautiful. Uh, that there's uh, there's something to the proper execution of these illusions that will transcend knowledge. Uh, my theory is based on the fact that the biggest fans of magic 
are other magicians. Yep. So knowing how it's done doesn't ruin the art. So all of this effort we have spent our whole magic history protecting the secret is going to go away. You know, everyone's going to be able to YouTube it. Everyone's going to have these contact lenses that'll tell them how to do it while you do it. And if I don't sell it to them, uh, my competition will, and their advertisement will be floating in front of their eyes while they're watching my performance. So I'd rather have it be me than my, my competition. So I, we need to shift from method to moment uh, to celebrate magic and not tricks, to celebrate uh, that even if you know how it's done, it doesn't matter. Guess what? You know, I know how that piano guy plays that song. He, he's just hitting the keys. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, and it's still beautiful to, to listen to. So I'm hoping that the art of magic evolves as it is. I'm watching it happen uh, with the celebration of magic uh, in, in the world today uh, where people know it's sleight of hand. Mm. They know Shin Lim is doing sleight of hand and they love it. They, they love the idea that somebody is doing magic and that they could set up those conditions to create that experience. And, uh, uh, you know, the world we live in, it's beautiful to tell someone, look, a rainbow. Uh, even if they know it's refracted light, it's still beautiful. Uh, I do have issue with people trying to sell a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Uh, and that is one of the roles I think magic has to play is to educate people about the difference between science and perception. That your truth is is based on what you experience, but that is not always scientifically accurate that that what you see is not always what you get yep and i i just want to say i i'm like i'm burning up in here because you're dropping so much fire i just wanted to say <laughs> it's like bam 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 it's just hitting me from every angle man and the guys are eating this up and obviously um this is the type of thing that i wanted to give you some love as well i know you're starting a new venture where you're, you're continuing to drop the fire the truth um, on YouTube, which, a, which is a platform that I know you have, um, decided to jump into with, you know, everything you got and to share your journey with everyone else and to try to help. And, um, you know, you are someone that should be out there doing it. You, you know what, you know, uh, and you are sharing things that people should hear just like they're hearing here. So why don't you let the guys know? And I've had a couple of questions people have wanted to know what can we expect from your YouTube channel? Because it is so new in its infancy. What can people expect? Yeah. You know? You know, I, I'm looking, it's not just for magicians, uh, so I won't be really revealing uh, too many effects. Cool. Um, it's really about creativity and art and, uh, and life. You know, like I had mentioned, I believe that this identity is an art piece. You know, Garrett Thomas is the noises that I respond to, that, uh, that this is just the choices I made and how blessed I am to get to be a magician. Um, you know, I'm just playing this game. Uh, because of that, you can make your life whatever you need to make it. If there's something that you want to change, you have the right to change it. There's nothing wrong with what has happened. It got you to where you're at today. But, you know, looking at life as an art piece will allow people to shape it uh, with a little more ability and not to let them say, well, this is just who I am, uh, and not empower them to take the steering wheel of their life. So talking about creativity, uh, as it relates to art and magic and life is what the YouTube channel is about. Um, it's just under my name, Garrett Thomas, and, uh, it will, um, I'm going to try to do at least one video a week right now. I'm actually, uh, well, my camera shut off. So but I was actually filming this too, just in case I said something awesome. And, uh, but uh, I'm gonna try to edit something and uh, I'm hoping to have uh, something out uh, I, on Wednesday. Um, that's what I released a uh, video last week, uh, but uh, it's gonna be tricky with being here at the Magic Castle. Uh, but as I get comfortable with this medium, I've never uh, made a video before. So uh, these are, uh, I'm. The first time I ever used Final Cut was uh, uh, putting that together, and I just decided to go all in. 
and uh, and uh, try it, uh, trusting that my other art forms uh, that I've studied would help uh, make the right decisions in a new medium. And a lot of people are liking what I got. You know, the picture's not perfect, the sound's not perfect, but uh, but I will, uh, uh, with your support, I will get there. People want to know: is there a uh, is there a way to find it easy? Is there a channel name? Is there a way? I'm looking at it myself, but um, you know, that's your channel. So how could people find it? If they um, want to find it on YouTube. it should be under Garrett Thomas, yeah. uh, but if, if you put in Garrett Thomas Magician, that might pop up faster. Sure. Uh, the logo that I have right now is a Please Stand By logo. I see that because uh, I'm just in the process of creating. So it's the uh, the old uh, Please Stand By TV logo. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, and you know, uh, Garrett's uh, thoughts. If you like what you hear here, then you're gonna love what he's doing over there, and he's doing it on his own terms. Uh, you know, here I'm kind of guiding the convo, but over there it's it's all Garrett Thomas. So, yeah, get in there and, and show him some love for sure. Yeah, I, I drop I drop a lot of things quickly, and it, it's a it's a bit to unpack. So, what I wanted to do with uh, the YouTube channel is pick one of those things that I say and delve into it uh, to really focus on to focus on the big decisions that I made that led me to uh, this style that really has an impact on my audience. Uh, this, you know, my favorite people to perform for are the people that say they hate magic because um, I present it in a way that's authentic and honest and they finally uh, understand what it's all about. And uh, what I find is if you design stuff for the least, it will all work for the most. So if you design um, a hallway to be good for he hearing impaired people, where the doors open automatically so that they can communicate, uh, that it benefits everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't just benefit people that need it. Um, it, it makes life better for everyone. So when I, uh, when I found that if I attack the big issues about what does magic help people? How does it benefit society? What is the point? You know, why are we just tricking people and fooling people? Uh, there's got to be something more. They're acting like it's something more, you know, and we forget it. We think we're just we're just tricking people. But you know what? The reason they're drawn to it is for bigger, deeper identity, social issues. Uh, you know, in this day and age. We're teaching people that, you know, you're going to have to accept and deny things that these truths that they feed us might not always be true. And uh, that you, just because you experience something might not be the truth of the situation, that maybe the experience of magic is strengthening society's muscles to deny things that they experience themselves. You know, so that now we can be more critical and go deeper into the math and the science of it when we're making serious decisions. Well said. Um, I was keeping an eye on the chat and someone found the link to your channel. Check this out. Uh, he is Mental Magic YT. That is your official kind of YouTube channel huh. name there. So Mental All right. Magic YT. We'll go with that. So, yeah, if you guys want Ment to check him Mental out. Mental Magic YouTube? It's uh, so youtube.com slash user, but you don't have to put user slash mental magic YT. Well, that might have been my older channel. I do have another one that only has one video on it. So double check that. This one does have two. This one does have both of your new videos. Okay. Yeah. That, so this looks like it. Then yeah. I, I thought I changed that name to my, to my name. I don't know if I, w I was allowed to. Oh yeah. They are tricky with what they let you do these days. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I think we're going to start to wrap this up. Uh, unless you have any last thoughts, obviously you have a lot of thoughts. You have a lot. <laughs> you have a lot of magic thinking going through your head all the time. But uh, if you guys are in the area, uh, Garrett is. You're there the whole week, right? At the Magic yep. Castle. The I'll be here week. until Sunday. Um, someone did ask earlier, and we can keep it short. But um, if someone wants to to visit the castle, not as a performer, but just as a guest, is there a way to do that that's easy? Because it is a private club. I don't know all the details about the castle, but you know, if someone wants to get in, how, how can they get in? 
Um, if you find a, a member or somebody uh, who is uh, a part of the Magic uh, Castle Academy, mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, give you an invite, and uh, you, it's a uh, it's a red carpet event, so it's a uh, suit and tie, and you have to uh, meet their dress code. And uh, there's also uh, you're required to buy a dinner, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you uh, want to uh, to come by. Uh, that's one way to go about it. Uh, you can also just become a member and join, uh, which uh, if that is something you're, you're interested in, you can uh, then have access to the, uh, the Magic Castle regularly. Cool. Well, uh, again, guys, if you are in the area that's in the uh, Los Angeles area over there in Hollywood, make sure to stop by the castle this week. Garrett Thomas, uh, is it every night you're doing the late night close-up or is that just last night? Late night close-up uh, from 10 till like... Uh, midnight so right. so i'll be doing it all week okay uh there were a couple of questions if you're coming to blackpool obviously you're not because you're at the castle but yeah are you booked for any conventions in 2020 and we'll go out on that um nothing nothing yet uh -huh. i'm really going to be focusing on uh i mean i will be at uh revolution in march uh in uh in in france mm -hmm. uh that's going to be uh uh, a, a fun uh, small convention. I'm uh, going to hang out with uh, some friends out there. But uh, um, there was uh, other conventions that we talked about, but I kind of uh, lost lost uh, touch with that. So I'm just going to going to shout out uh, for those uh, that that want me to be a part of their convention. Uh, reach out to me, and, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can be there. All right. Well. Uh, see him if you can. That's all I can tell you guys. See him if you can. Hope you enjoyed this chat, guys, with Garrett Thomas. Garrett, thank you so much for your time. I know you got the uh, uh, Magic Castle again tonight, so enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Rest up and hang out. And uh, yeah, man, this is a lot of fun. And congrats on the new release with Opus, obviously. Uh, people are very excited about it. And again, thank you. You, you are you. Uh, definitely one of the good guys, and we appreciate your time, man. So thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, cool. There you go, guys. The one and only Garrett Thomas. Uh, the man is amazing. His magic's amazing. This has been amazing. And you guys rock. Thank you for the questions and the feedback. Uh, if you like how he thinks, you like his stuff, don't forget we are doing a giveaway for his at the table lecture, the download. Just drop a uh, like and a comment on this video and you're entered. We'll announce the winners next week. We're doing two as a giveaway, one for YouTube and one for Facebook because we love you guys. You know, we love you guys. So why not? Um, but Opus is out. And as he mentioned, Get a ring size. It's a little bit bigger than you normally wear. You don't want that ring to be too tight uh, if you are going to end up picking up Opus, uh, which I suggest that you do. All right. So I am out of here this evening, my friends. I'm hitting the air. I'm heading over to Blackpool this evening. So I will be flying out of Vegas, hitting the uh, the air tonight. So if you're going to be at Blackpool, I will see you there. I can't wait. As I tell everybody, bring warm clothes. It is freaking cold. So that is it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you when I get back. I've got a uh, another great guest lined up. Keep an eye on the events. We do bring you people every single week. That is it for today. So like, comment on this video, a chance to win a free at the table lecture from Garrett Thomas. Not easy. All right, guys. I will catch you guys next time. See ya.